No joke this week, then. Well, what do you think? Am I supposed to get a laugh out of that? Well, maybe your heart's just not in it. This week's video is all about the tarot card where a heart being pierced by three swords simply isn't bad enough. It also has to be pissing it down as well. The Three of Swords is a card of pain and sorrow. There's really no other way to put it. Arthur Oded Waite describes the image as three swords piercing a heart, cloud and rain behind. Do you remember when we were doing the cups and we got to the three and it was all about friendship and celebration and good times and having a little drink and everyone was happy? Well, this is about as far away from that as you can get. I've talked before about how the cards have to cover every aspect of the human experience or they simply won't work. So this is inevitable, really. We all go through bad times, so of course that has to be reflected in the tarot. We've seen specific cases of pain in other cards, like how the Ten of Wands symbolised heavy burdens, or the Five of Cups symbolised loss. But with the Three of Swords, we're just boiling all that down into the very concept of sorrow itself. I kind of see it as the Ace of Sadness. This is another tarot card that we can't really talk about without mentioning depression. Now, I'm not a trained psychiatrist. I'm just a guy who makes videos and bad jokes. So please don't take anything I say seriously. I don't even take myself seriously. However, I think it's worth making a distinction between sorrow and depression. Sorrow is a completely natural emotional response to a bad situation that comes up in our lives. Depression is considered to be a much more severe condition that goes beyond those feelings and into a crippling low mood that just doesn't go away. I understand that depression can be triggered by a period of sadness in our lives, but then goes on to feelings of worthlessness, weight loss, sleep problems, fatigue, loss of interest in things we used to enjoy, and a relentless pattern of negative thinking. If you're experiencing anything like that, then I would beg you to seek professional help. If you feel like you're going through a crisis right now, then there's organisations in the UK and the US you can call like the Samaritans, who can listen and give you advice. I'll put links in the description. If you're in another country and you'd like to share a link to an organisation like that, then please do so in the comments. So I mentioned in the video for the Ace about how the swords can represent the truth and how that can be a blessing or it can break our hearts. This card symbolises a time when the swords cut straight through us, not once, but three times. Rachel Pollock says of all the swords, the three most simply represents pain and heartbreak. Yet for all its gloom, the picture brings a certain calm in the symmetry of its swords. I look at this card as emotionally hitting rock bottom. A time when the sudden realisation of the truth leaves us devastated. However, Pollock goes on to talk about how we shouldn't avoid the feeling or try to suppress the emotion. When we looked at the Five of Cups, we saw that even in the depths of grief, there was a bridge in the background that represented moving on from sadness and into a brighter future. But in order to cross that bridge, we need to face the pain with a spirit of courage and acceptance. She says the three tells us that we must not push the pain away from us, but somehow take it deep inside until it becomes transformed by courage and love. <coughs> The Thoth card is heavy on the dark green and features a very elaborate looking handle on the big sword. I can't see how that would be practical. Alistair Crowley says the symbol represents the great sword of the magician, point uppermost. It cuts the junction of two short curved swords. We had a rose in the centre of the last card in the suit and we've got one here too, but the petals are starting to fall off. Crowley says this card is dark and heavy. It is, so to speak, the womb of chaos. There is an intense lurking passion to create, but its children are monsters. Blimey! Lon Milo Duquette puts a slightly more cheerful spin on the card. He talks about how sorrow can lead to wisdom, as he did with Buddha. According to the legend, Buddha was confined to his father's palace in his younger years, so he had no concept of hardship. When he finally ventured out and was confronted by scenes of suffering, it caused him to begin his spiritual journey and led to his enlightenment. Duquette says, without forms or reason, the mind must give way to a consciousness higher than itself. The Three of Swords represents the wondrous trance of sorrow that first enlightened the Buddha. We should all be so lucky to draw sorrow from the deck. The Sforza Marseille cards have surprised us all by adding a third sword to their flowery and swordy designs. The Solar Busker card might look a little familiar. I've talked before about how Pamela Coleman Smith, who painted the Rider Waite deck, was influenced by the Solar Busker cards. Before Pixie's Tarot, the Solar Busker was the only deck to feature full illustrations on all the minor arcanas. So it stands to reason that Pixie would have taken inspiration from some of those cards, and none more so than this one. Man Wan is no longer the Prince of the Universe. We see him vegetate at the Sphere of the Globe. Is that a good thing? 
Yeah? We must now tear apart the bowels of the earth and defend even our children if we want them to escape slavery. What? Now, I wasn't expecting to have a good time this week, but I didn't think we'd be tearing apart the bowels of the earth. The hermetic title for the Three of Swords is Lord of Sorrow. So I think that the title Lord of Sorrow tells you everything you need to know about this one. Everybody seems to be in agreement when it comes to the Three of Swords. The Thoth card is simply called Sorrow, so I'm afraid to say that it's Sorrow as far as the eye can see. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier, how sorrow is just a fact of life and there's no getting away from it. However, how we deal with sorrow is the important part and I'll be getting to that later on. The Three of Swords corresponds to the Libra Zodiac sign and to the planet Saturn. Oh, well, surprise, surprise. I'm absolutely flabbergasted to find out Saturn is associated with this card. Who'd have thunk? So we've got the delicate scales of Libra heavily weighed down on the side of shitness by Saturn. Now, of course, I'm just messing around and talking about the negative associations here. Libra is the sign of balance and harmony, while Saturn is the planet of discipline and thinking long term. So this combination can have a positive side to it when it comes to the Three of Swords. We all know the phrase time heals all wounds, and I think the pairing of Libra and Saturn can encourage us to try to see the bigger picture and maybe know that what we're going through will eventually pass. The Three of Swords celebrities include Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee, Ten Commandments actor Charlton Heston, and Don't Speak, it's Gwen Stefani. The Three of Swords resides in the world of Yetzirah and sits at the third Sephira of Binar at the top of the Pillar of Severity. So we're back at Binar, the Cosmic Mother, who translates to understanding. Binar is considered to be the negative counterpoint to the Sephira of Hokmar on the opposite side of the tree. Now it's important that we don't view positive and negative as being good and bad in this case. It's more like the positive and negative points on a battery. Positive is seen as active, while negative is thought of as receptive. According to Israel Regardi, in short, Binar is the substantive vehicle of every possible phenomenon, physical or mental just as Hokmar is the essence of consciousness. Its colour is black since it is negative and receptive of all things. The Three of Swords herb is Polarisy Root. This herb is often used as a remedy for coughs and colds. Well, we don't want any of that then. Why not? Because we want to go viral. <laughs> but what does it all mean? Well, by now, I think we all know what the Three of Swords means. Wait says removal, absence, delay, division, rupture, dispersion, and all that the design signifies naturally, being too simple and obvious to call for specific enumeration. I think it means it's bad. It's a bad card. It's a real bummer. It's bad. We talked earlier about how we should deal with sorrow and how we can use it to move to a place of acceptance. The first thing is that we should never try to suppress the feeling of emotional pain because it will always come back to bite us on the arse at some point. Rachel Pollack says, To true sorrow we can make only one response. Take the pain into our hearts, accept it and go beyond it. This is another card that really highlights the need for self-care in times like this and the importance of emotional support. If we're able to come to terms with the pain that we're feeling and learn from it, then we can come back stronger and more joyful than we were before. Rachel Pollock goes on to say, acceptance and love can turn pain into joyful memory and embracing of life. If you read for a young woman, this tarot announces to her a scramble of little duration. Watch out, it sounds like you're gonna fall over and be scrambling about. That would add embarrassment to sorrow, so maybe you should wear sturdy shoes. It predicts that she will marry a man she has little love for. Oh no, don't do that. That's just sorrow for everybody involved. Buy yourself a decent pair of shoes instead. How the hell have you managed to make this about shoes? Now, it would be nice to think that the reverse Three of Swords would be the opposite of sorrow and heralds a time of great happiness. Oh, does it really? No, it doesn't. Wade says reversed mental alienation, error, loss, distraction, disorder, confusion. So we talked earlier about the need to accept our sorrow so we can move on, but if we don't do that, it could lead to the kind of confusion and disorder that Wade's talking about. Rachel Pollock says the healing process becomes blocked when we fight acceptance. If something in life appears too painful, we may push it away, try not to think about it and avoid any reminders. This card appearing in the reverse announces that you regret a reckless mishap, not only for you, but for the person whom you have compromised with your scantiness. 
That's what happens if you go out wearing inappropriate footwear. You fall on your ass and everyone sees your underpants. The big takeaway from the Three of Swords is feeling sorrow, finding support and eventually moving on to a better place. Emotional healing is a process that begins with sharing our sorrows and the realization that it's one of the things that makes us human. Thomas More once said, here bring your wounded hearts, here tell your anguish. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Well, what a cheerful looking card that was. May the coming days bring you anything besides sorrow. Until next time.